and compliments of the season. Welcome to yet another insightful edition of the program, CAC Weekly, a weekly program that keeps you abreast on the activities and achievements of the Corporate Affairs Commission. My name is Amina Jibril. And we start off with the cheering news that the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol, has recognized the role of the Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, in the fight against crime and crime-related activities. The recognition culminated in the presentation of an award for excellent partnership and collaboration in the fight against crime by the Interpol to the Commission. The presentation ceremony was held in Abuja on the 19th of December 2020 to commemorate Interpol's end of the year party and award night. The Registrar General and CEO of the CAC, Al Haji Garba Abu Bakr, represented by the Deputy Director, Intergovernmental Affairs Unit, Mr. M.Y. Aliyu, FSI, received the award on behalf of the Commission. Alhaji Garba Abu Bakr thanked the Interpol for the award and stressed that the gesture would no doubt spur the Commission to continue to offer selfless service to the nation. We say congratulations to the CAC family. And now moving on to the continuation of our efforts to further dissect the CAMA 2020, its implementation and impact on businesses. We shall today take a look at key innovations such as the Limited Liability Partnerships, LLPs and Limited Partnerships, LPs, the beneficial ownership and the ability to curb corruption and money laundering. But we will be right back after this break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Aside from ensuring transparency and accountability in governance, the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAMA 2020, is poised to develop in the private sector and democratize the process of doing business in Nigeria. The Kama 2020, the game changer, as it is often called, is poised to further enhance and facilitate trade and investment in the country. The Kama 2020 has 870 sections, which are classified into chapters on the parts A to G. While parts A deals with the composition and administration of the registry, which functions as a regulator, Part B has 29 chapters, which stipulates the life cycle of companies from their incorporation through to liquidation. Part C and D have 11 and 2 chapters, respectively, and set out provisions that govern limited liability partnerships, LLPs, and limited partnerships, LPs. Parts E and F reprised sections on the registration and regulations of business name and incorporated trustees, with a few changes outlined in chapters 3 and 7, respectively. Parts G introduces the quasi-judicial body. Now, quasi-judicial body, for the benefit of some of our viewers, according to Wikipedia, it is defined as a non-judicial body which can interpret law. It is an entity such as an arbitrator, or a tribunal board, generally of a public administrative agency which has powers and procedures resembling those of a court of law or judge, and which is obliged to objectively determine facts and draw conclusions from them so as to provide the basis of an official action. Such actions are able to remedy a situation or impose legal penalties, and they may affect the legal rights, duties, or pre of specific parties. Now, Kama 2020, an important milestone for the business sector, removes substantially a significant number of bottlenecks that hit to prevent market penetration of micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs, and significantly reduces the reporting obligations and requirements that may ordinarily inhibit the growth of the MSMEs. One of the key innovations of the CAMA 2020 is the introduction of limited liability partnerships, LLPs, clearly spelled out in section 746 to 794 and limited partnerships, LPs, in section 795 to 810. These two injunctions contained in Part C of the new Act are not only new and fresh, but provide great opportunities for businesses. Speaking with CAC Weekly, the Assistant Director, Registry Department, CAC, Mr. Tululope Adiola Shonaike, explains further what limited liability partnerships, LLPs, and limited partnerships, LPs, are all about, particularly their differences and potentials for the Nigerian economy. 
today we're going to be talking about the Part C of the new law, uh, which deals with the limited liability partnership and the limited partnership. We do understand that under the new law, Section 746 to 794 deals with the limited liability partnership. partnership. So for the purpose of our viewers, maybe you just help us break it down, help us understand what the limited liability partnership is all about. Before now, uh, there was no such provision um, in the Companies and Allied Matters Act of 1990. But the new act that um, the 2020 Companies and Allied Matters Act has introduced that um, entity, that co um, business arrangement called uh, the Limited Liability Partnership. The Limited Liability Partnership is an alternative um, corporate arrangement for businesses. In many respects, um, it's just like the private uh, um, limited companies. And in some other respect, it still enjoys the uh, benefits and the advantages of a partnership. Um, what we need to understand with the limited liability partnership is that it is a body corporate. In other words, um, the, it's different from the partners, just like the company, um, which is different from its promoters. So for all the partners in the limited liability partnership, that's why it's called a limited liability partnership. There are liabilities. There are um, exposures in cases of debts, you know, of uh, liabilities of the partnership is limited to that aspect of their contribution, what they have undertaken to contribute to the partnership. Okay. So what is the difference between a limited liability partnership and a limited partnership? We also understand that under the new law, um, section 795 mm -hmm. to 8110 10, right. deals with limited partners. partnership. Mm. Let's understand what limited partnership is, then we'll now begin to talk about the difference between the two, because oh, okay. people will say it's partnership, partnership after all. That's true. Uh, yeah. Partnership is partnership. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that yeah. again is a simple way of looking yeah. at it. Um, don't forget that I said earlier that mm. uh, for the LLP, that's limited liability partnership, mm. it uh, enjoys what you call corporate personality. Mm. Now, in the case of a limited partnership, it does not enjoy what you call corporate personality. And in the case of the limited liability, I mean the limited partnership, only there are, you must have a general partner, at least one, and you must have um, what you call the limited partner. Now, that limited partner is the only one whose liability is limited in that arrangement. The liabilities of the general partner for debts of the company is not limited. In other words, um, if um, the situation so arises, uh, the general partner would have to be responsible for settling the debts um, of um, the partnership. And if for some reason the contributions are not enough to do that, he can actually move against him personally okay. using his personal assets. But that is not the case in the case of um, limited liability partnerships. Mm -hmm. So you find that for the limited partnerships, it's, um, it's ideal for small companies, I mean small uh, businesses, enterprises, or for uh, those who, like you will say, want to test the waters before going fully into it. Partnership generally, partnerships generally. When you say, just say partnerships, you're referring to general partners. Okay. Now, general partners are the ones that are responsible for the management, for the running mm. of the business. And their liabilities are not limited. In other words, um, they can be personally liable for the debts of the partnership. When I say personal liable, it means that if the assets of the partnership is not enough to settle the debts, we can actually proceed against you personally and take your own asset, personal property, to settle mm. such debts. Now, for a limited partnership, you must have one person that must be able to play that role, that you can hold. For statutory compliance, that is required, the obligations to file papers mm. with the registry that CAC, it is the general partner that is responsible for maintaining records, for filings, and all of that. Then you have the um, limited partner who just brings his money. He's just an investor. And he says, okay, this is my money. Um, let me join you in a partnership to promote this business. Now, ordinarily, the, general, the limited partner is not liable for the debts of the partnership beyond his contribution to the business. But when he gets involved, uh, that benefit no longer avails him. When he gets involved in running the business, then he's also liable personally. On the other side, the limited liability partnership, like I said, you need at least two people to start it. And that is because you must have at least two designated partners. Now, designated partners are to limited liability partnership. What directors are to companies. The designated partners are those that are responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the 
of the partnership, limited liability partnership, and for again, filing statutory returns, compliance issues, and all of that. The only difference between the LP and LLP here is that for the LLP, all the partners have their liabilities limited. So, and if for any reason, the number of designated partners falls below two, then every other partner is deemed to be a designated partner. Okay. So you must, once you have the number falling below two, the law uh, requires that within 30 days, mm -hmm. you must appoint another designated partner to fill that, that point. Now, whether for an LLP or an LP, a corporate body may be a partner. For the um, limited partnership, a corporate body, just like the business name, may be a partner directly. Right? Same thing for the limited liability partnership. But a corporate body cannot be a designated partner. If a corporate body must be represented as a designated partner, then it must appoint an individual yeah. to that office, okay. to that to be designated partner. The purpose of co uh, regulations, compliance, and all of that, um, the designated partners are responsible. And in the case of the limited uh, partnership, you have um, the general partner responsible. Now, for the limited liability partnership, let me say one thing. It combines, it has um, um, this advantage of combining the benefits of a corporate personality. When I say corporate personality, that means a person that the law recognizes different from those that are promoting the business. Now, it has that benefit. Once you register as a limited liability company, you become a body corporate, different from the partners. Now, um, it also has this advantage of combining the flexibility of a partnership. Okay. So you'll find that um, between the company per se, that's a private limited companies, and the limited liability partnership, the limited liability partnership is more flexible in management. There are several things that are not prescribed by law, but that are strictly regulated by the agreement mm. um, of the partnership. Whether for a limited partnership or limited liability partnership, mm. it is regulated by agreement. There is a partnership agreement. So things like the mutual rights of uh, partners mm. between themselves or partners and the partnership itself, they are regulated by the uh, partnership agreement. Um, removal of um, a partner, introduction of a partner, all these things are regulated by the partnership agreement. So you find that the threshold of regulation, the burden of regulation is actually lower compared to um, that of a company. On the company, on the other side, there are several rules, you know, extensive rules in the company that are regulating its management and administration. But that does not apply to uh, most of those, those apply to the limited liability partnership. Okay. Yeah. What would be the requirements to go for any of these two? Um, there are, there are um, template forms, you know, um, application forms that um, we have designed and it will be online. You know, um, the requirements will be the basic information that um, you will need because CAC is a repository really of, of um, information on these entities. You don't bring money here, it's just information we keep. So um, to register either way, whether for a limited partnership or a limited lovely partnership, you'll be required to provide the full details of the partners, the addresses. Um, you'll also be required to um, accompany your application with the partnership agreement. Now, where there is a default partnership agreement, there is a template in the Act, uh, Schedule 15, um, where you don't, you think it's okay, you don't need so anything complex, you can adopt it. You know. And then you have to have a registered business address in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Of course, we, we need a means of identification, a photo means you know, of identification, any of the recognized means of uh, photo ID, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps the data page of your uh, tra traveler's passport, mm -hmm. um, your driver's license, um, your national ID card, and even your voter's card will require all of that. Okay. And, um, Right now, the regulations have been put forward um, to the minister when we are waiting his approval on it. But what is proposed as fees for registration for a limited lovely partnership is 20,000. And you have both the certificate and the certified extracts copies of yeah. um, the information you have provided. For the limited partnership, it's 15,000 naira. Okay. Mm -hmm. For some people, will it be the same thing as a business name? The limited partnership, is it the same thing as a business name? 
Yeah, some perspectives, yes, but not exactly that. Okay. Um, for a business name, there's an no upgraded level of business. Name. Well, maybe with some <laughs> yes, upgraded um, in, in the sense that yeah. it now introduces some some limitation to liability. Okay. For a business name, the liabilities are strict. There's no limitation to liability. Okay. But for limited partnership, there is one partner that has limited partnership. Mm. And again, because it's a partnership, you must have at least two people. Mm. Uh, for the sole proprietorship, you have to go under business names. Mm. Mm. So in the case of insolvency, what happened mm. for the limited liability? Lim limited liability partnerships. Yeah. Right. Um, before you even get to that point, there are also provisions. The provisions um, on um, investigation mm. that applies to companies also applies to um, limited liability partnerships. Mm. Um, Again, for limited liability partnerships, even though um, it's not so expressly provided um, in the law, uh, they can borrow. And um, I believe that nobody will, bankers will not give you money without that clause on receivership. That when you start having problems, they can move in to try and mm. mitigate their losses, recover their money. Yeah. So you'll find that those um, rules will still apply in the case of limited liability partnerships. Okay. Mm -hmm. We do understand that there are new inter injections into the law, the mm -hmm. limited liability partnership and the limited partnership. At what point were they, did they become important to be included? Um, it was um, our experience um, that um, some states had started uh, registering um, limited liability partnerships and uh, limited partnerships. Um, these were responses to um, uh, the demand for these entities. It's not like um, they didn't serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. It was clear to us that um, people, investors, um, needed these services. They needed to be able to do their businesses using these forms. But by um, for the limited partnership, that shouldn't have been a problem because uh, partnership generally, because it's not a body corporate, partnerships generally are regulated by state laws, you know, and um, the Partnership Act of uh, 1890, by virtue of the uh, statute of uh, general application, is applicable in most of these places. Some people reenacted it, some people fine tuned it or updated it. Uh -huh. But partnership generally is regulated by states. Okay. Now, when it comes to limited liability partnerships, because you are now talking about creating body corporates, you know, limitation of liabilities and um, recognition of persons in law created by. Um, instruments of the law. Now, these are matters that are strictly within the purview of the federal government and federal mm -hmm. legislature. Mm -hmm. So that was why it was necessary at that point um, to address that matter. If people are craving, if people are demanding for these forms of entities, if they um, so desire them for businesses, then we should be responsive to that. We should be seen to be um, creating and making it available for them to, um, and making it not creating a situation where people will be forced to take actions that will violate the law. I'm sure if these um, entities had existed under the law, right, those states would have, it would have been difficult for them to introduce it. Because our experience also was that after registration in those states, mm. people still come back to CAC with those certificates. I say they want to register under CAC. Okay. Because for them, it's, um, they believe that registration with the Corporate Affairs Commission gives you a national... Uh, outlook. Yes, outlook. Would there be a conflict of interest? between um, the commission and the states? Yes, I think for now, the states have stopped that. For a while now, they don't do that okay. anymore. Um, for general partnerships, like I said, mm -hmm. the state laws regulate all of that. But for limited liability partnerships, I, I do not think any state does that anymore. For I those who have registered before now mm -hmm. with their state, and what happens to them within the Inter new law? Uh, uh, well, as it were, um, they have to come and pursue another registration as it were because they are not registered under the Companies and Allied Matters Act and so they cannot take advantage or enjoy the benefits uh, provided so by that So that previous law. registration becomes invalid? As it were, I mean, it's just like going to say you register a company in a state. Mm. Uh, I mean, if it, is, if it cannot stand, it cannot stand. Okay. Mm. What would be the sanction for defaulters? Um, generally, um, we, the Act um, gives the Commission uh, the powers to make regulations in that regard. So you find that uh, not just for limited lively partnerships or for um, limited partnerships, but for all entities under, this, under the Act. Um, before now, we had a situation where penalties, sanctions, where monetary sanctions were embodied in the law. 30 years ago, I mean, you could, you could assess a penalty of 15 error, just 15 error against a company for default. I mean, if you say 15 Naira per day, or even 5 Naira per day, mm. for one month, it was something substantial mm. because of the value of the Naira then. 
And over 30 years, this same amount had remained in the law. Now, that made it uh, so clear to us that it was ill-advised, right, to uh, continue to have sanctions in substantive uh, provisions. Uh, um, the practice generally now yeah. is to move sanctions out of the substantive provisions mm -hmm. to uh, uh, subsidiary legislations, I mean regulations, so that with time, mm -hmm. you can also move. Where um, um, some uh, prescriptions have become inadequate to deter, because um, um, beyond punishing offenses, um, the objective of sanctions is also to deter. A system will thrive better where people don't even contravene the law. Mm -hmm. Because there's a cost to making amends when you contravene. Mm -hmm. right? There's a, a lot more to say for um, um, the culture of compliance than the culture of impunity, even though there are remediations. Remediations may not always mm -hmm. assuage. Uh -huh. So um, the body of um, sanctions now will be in the regulation. Like I said, the regulations are before the minister at the moment, and we expect that any time um, now we should have it. Mr. Tolulokwe Adeola, Shanaika, yes. Assistant Director, Registry Department. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you very much for the time. Another key injection in the Kama 2020 is the beneficial ownership, which not only reveals the identity of those behind companies, but also goes a long way to fight corruption in accordance with global best practice. Mr. Chidebere Wachuku, a legal practitioner, tells us how strategically important that provision is. The beneficial ownership disclosure uh, under Section 119 and Section 120 of the Kama 2020 provides that any person who has a significant ownership in any company must be disclosed by such company in filing their returns. Hence, there's this obligation on companies which was not there before, to disclose in detail the particulars of any person that holds up to 5% of their shares in filing the annual returns. What this means is that any person filing its annual returns, any company filing its annual returns as mandated at the end of their financial year, must disclose the persons who own up to significant amount of shares in the company. Section 119 and Section 120. In fact, if you read down under Section 120, Section 120 makes it mandatory for any person who is a principal officer of the company to face a penalty, as may be recommended by the Corporate Affairs Commission, if they fail to disclose such. Also, Section 119 also makes it also mandatory for the company to disclose within seven days, wherein somebody acquires shares in the company and that shares can be classified as being significant enough to hold up to 5% in the company shares. So for a company who has shareholders, maybe let's say five shareholders, and these shareholders own up to 20-20% of the shares, in that light, they must disclose their particulars in filing their returns. And if the time for the returns is not yet due, they must, within seven days of such person or entity acquiring such shares, file to the commission the particulars of such person. So I think it is a very wonderful provision and which is, is going to go a long way to fight um, um, corruption and also um, combat money laundering. <laughs> And this is where we draw the curtain on this week's edition of the program, CAC Weekly. We do hope you enjoyed watching. For comments and inquiries, please take advantage of our social media handles and helplines. On Twitter, it is at CAC Nigeria 1. On Instagram and Facebook, it is Corporate Affairs Commission. Our email is cservice at cac.gov.ng. Our website is www.cac.gov.ng. And our helplines are 081-822-99016 or 081-822-98971, 090-874-01598 or 090-874-01599 and 090-8740-1600. Do join us next week for another interesting edition of the program. Same time, 
same station. From me, Amina Jabril, and the whole team here, it is bye for now.